in the media conference with Lal Goyal, which is brought to you by V4 News, Global TV, V4 Stream, News Gaon Se, Samvaz Sarokar News, Organ Donation India Foundation and Gyan. Our end where is to enlighten you with the current topic. And today our topic is not only current, but it's quite hot and it's very, very relevant. The topic is false narratives on India. A false narrative is a story that you perceive as being true, but has little basis in reality. A false narrative is one in which a complete narrative pattern is perceived in a given situation, but it is not an actual narrative in the situation. The perception of a false narrative can be due to insufficient or inaccurate information or to insufficient or inaccurate assessment. The creation of a false narrative can be due to naturally occurring narratives, patterns, transient, contextual framing, in the adverb presentation or intentional deception. Like an iceberg, many of the elements of any given real world narratives are often hidden from view beneath the surface or around the corner. Because narratives are factual in nature, a portion of a larger narrative may appear to be complete in and of itself, but much as a corner cut from a hologram will still present a complete image, just not from all angles that are available in the whole. So while the pattern of a narrative may be present, it may not be driven by its own internal dynamics, but by those of a larger narrative of which it is a part. In social psychology, the term fundamental attribution error describes a cognitive bias in which an individual interprets another person's actions as driven primarily by intent while demphasizing or disregarding any external or environmental conditions which may have influenced their actions. The opposite bias is the actor observer error in which an individual overemphasizes the impact of external factors on his or her own actions. These two varieties of the human desire to find meaning illustrate that meaning is not so much found as imposed. In fact, either of these biases generates a false narrative. The human mind seeks meanings in its environment by imposing templates upon its perception until a pattern is found that for desired purposes fits observation sufficiently. As a result, we continually create false narratives which appear to be supported by the situations that surround us, rejecting them only when the course of events diverge from narrative prediction. No narrative is forever, as long as it maintains itself as an internally driven confluences of structure and dynamics, it may be perceived as a closed system, constant in its function. A true narrative maintains its identity through internal mechanism. Conversely, a false narrative may appear internally driven when it, in fact, it is externally maintained by forces outside the apparent narrative, like a puppet on a string. Such an apparent narrative provides neither an accurate description of the nature of the elements it contains, nor accurately predicts the course they will actually take. Any narrative elements by itself may have an infinite number of meanings. It is only when it is taken in conjunction with other elements that the range of possible the, ra the range of uh, possible meanings for that element becomes constrained. Eventually, sufficient Hello. interconnections. Hello. Uh, yes, yes, please. You are there, Dr. Bose. Yeah. You have to uh, turn this thing. We are live. We are already yeah. on. Oh, uh, eventually, suffi sufficient uh, interactions among elements may be established to limit the potential meanings to the singular. If, however, the initial element is misinterpreted in meaning, then each succeeding element may be cast into an another misinterpretation by the observer in the attempt to make it fit with the initial interpretation. Individuals who do not provide sufficient ongoing clarification may inadvertently present a false narrative. False narratives may be created with the intent to deceive by limiting the number of narratives elements provided provided so that the observer completes the bulk of the narrative themselves, thereby taking ownerships of the narrative by personalizing it. This can be accomplished by limiting the scope of information available and or the time in which 
to consider it. In this manner, the author establishes a constrained narrative space in which both content and context are controllable to a desired effect. As the philosopher David Hume defined truth, while it works, it is truth. When it fails to work, it is no longer truth. Eastern philosophy holds that the Tao that can be spoken is not the eternal. Tao meaning that no truth can ever be so fully defined as to be universal truth. Jain professes that you cannot step into the same river twice and the American slang proclaims that was then, this is now. Once common in print, the prevalence of false narratives has increased with the rise of social media, especially the Facebook news feed. Political polarization, post-truth politics, confirmation bias, and social media algorithms have been implicated in the spread of false narratives. It is sometimes generated and propagated by hostile foreign actors, particularly during elections. The use of anonymously hosted false narratives websites has made it difficult to prosecute source of false narratives for libel. False narratives includes satirical articles misinterpreted as genuine and articles that employ sensationalist or clickbait headlines that are not supported in the text. False narratives can reduce the impact of real news by competing with it. It also has a potential to undermine trust in serious media coverage. The Swedish agency VDAM attached to the University of Gothenburg that produces a document, uh, produces a democracy report every year, has once again downgraded India in its 2021 report. According to this institution, India was an electoral democracy in 2020, 2010, and it has now turned into an electoral autocracy. This report makes some sweeping acquisitions against India. It questions the integrity of the electoral system in the country. This institute now says India is an autocratic as Pakistan, even though it is an Islamic republic that constitutionally bars non-Muslims from holding the office of president and prime minister. Further, this report says India is worse than Bangladesh, which has Islam as the state religion. The most objectionable part of this report is the question it has raised about the integrity of elections in India with a specific reference to the 2019 Lok Sabha elections. Every Indian who values the country's constitution and electoral history must condemn this conclusion because of the following reason. One, this institute presumes that India is run by one party. Two, that other parties do not matter. This is totally absurd because as many as 44 political parties are in power in 31 states and union territories in the country, excluding the BJP. Parties like the Tirimul Congress, TMC, the Telangana Rashtriya Samiti, TRS, the Bichu Janata Dal, BJD, and YSR Congress in Andhra Pradesh won a majority of the seats in their states in that election in 2019. The TMC and the BJP won, BJP, BJD won 22 Lok Sabha seats each, while the DMK picked up 23 and TRS got 9. Further, after our Honorable Prime Minister, Mr. Narendra Modi, became the Prime Minister in 2014, the Amadmi Party AAP won 67 of 70 seats in Delhi Assembly. The Marxist won in Kerala. Mamta Banerjee's TMC registered a massive victory in West Bengal recently. And the Congress won the state assembly elections in Rajasthan and Chhattisgarh. To name just a few of the states that voted against the BJP. Therefore, when someone questions the integrity of our election systems, Indians must question the integrity of the institutions that are saying this. Now, how the false narratives were mentioned in the foreign and Indian press about the India's budget. Citing the string of pro-poor pro measures such as free ration and cooking gas rolled out by the government, Finance Minister Ms. Nirmala Sitaraman lashed out at the opposition parties for creating a false narrative that the budget was pro-rich and the Modi administration only worked for cronies. She said that the, under the PM Awas Yojana, more than 1.7 crore houses have been completed. Is that for the rich? She asked, adding that more than 2.6 crore households were being electrified under the Sobhagya scheme since October 2017. Is that for the rich? Total value of orders placed on the government e-marketplace is rupees 8.2 lakhs crore, which is more than rupees 8 trillion. Are they 
being given to big companies they are being given to msmes we have helped our small and medium companies to get a market is that for the rich and the big capitalist she asked the f finance minister said loan sanctions under the mudra yojana totaled more than rupees 27000 crore who takes loans under mudra yojana damats she asked now about the covid reporting the covid wave india is facing now usa has already faced us has a population of 328.2 million as opposed to india's population of 1.36 billion usa had 599863 covid related deaths usa has one of the best health care infrastructure us has resources has money yes how many of you know usa underwent immense struggle during covid surge how many of you know there was acute shortages of medication pp kits including face mask even syringes and needles used in hospitals how many of you know there was no room to store bodies in the mocks the fun funeral homes funeral homes sorry were blocked backed up how many of you know there was and there is shortage of healthcare personnel how many of you know how many people lost jobs most of you are clueless about it why because the media in the us was more responsible with the reporting than our media now for this our health minister has give, given a rebuttal to the medical journal lancet he said in a tweet a fair rebuttal to the imbalanced editorial in the lancet uh, titled india covid 19 emergency published on may 8th while the covid crisis did assume alarming proportions in india it was indeed important to remain politically unbiased for a reputed journal now the health minister also shared the professor's blog after lancet criticizes prime minister modi health minister harshvardhan shared a blog by a tata memorial center professor after medical journal the lancet criticized the pm narendra modi led government for the covid 19 crisis in india the professor wrote while the crisis is indeed alarming in india the editorial is suitable for a politically motivated tabloid rather than a reputed academic journal now india is the world's largest and most vibrant democracy india is the most liberal and diverse society in the world therefore the time has come for the citizens to become aware of their own constitutional strengths and treat these reports with the contempt that they deserve and to discuss this very very important point because today the social media forget the social media i may say that most of the national media are day night right and left uh, hammering and um, uh, giving the false narratives and not only creating the problem for those who are working day and night the health workers the police people the administration but creating a fear Uh, uh, psychosis in the mind of indian citizens now to discuss this very very important uh, topic uh, the false narratives of india we have a very elite those who are knows this top topic as well as those who are aware about the situation in india the panelist very knowledgeable panelist i would like to invite my first guest he is dr cv anand bose ies dr cv anand bose ies is one man expert commission on labor to prepare an action plan for the welfare and development of the workforce in the context of covid-19 he is also the principal advisor government of india heritage project he was former head of disaster management government of india and central draft relief commissioner government of india he was the vice chancellor of national museum university of delhi he has authored 40 books in english malayalam and hindi including novels short story and essays four of his books have become best sellers four books on vastu and architecture and one book on housing received prestigious the sharja international book affair book fair award dr bose is an housing expert in a waiter writer orator and visionary the path breaking institution set up by him such as nimriti kendra building center district tourism council and habitat alliance have been replicated at the state national and global level he was the head of the prestigious supreme court committee on the treasures of shri padma vaswami temple 
Dr. Bose addressed United Nations General Assembly and his specialized sessions five times on various international issues. Dr. Bose is a recipient of 31 national and international awards, including United Nations Global Best Practice Award. He also received prestigious Jawaharlal Nehru Fellowship. Kerala government termed him Lord of Ideas. Former Prime Minister Mr. Manmohan Singh called him inspired civil servant. And our Honorable Prime Minister Mr. Modi called him Man of Ideas. Welcome Dr. C. V. Anand Bose on our show. Dr. C. V. Anand Bose, you are well aware. After all, you are there everywhere. You are watching all the media very closely because being the, on the helm of the uh, One Man Expert Commission uh, for the labor and for the, because of the COVID-19, you know ins and outs what is happening in the country. But what we are hearing, what we are watching day and night on the media, what we are reading in the newspaper, what types of articles are coming, we would like to know your views on the false narratives on India. Dr. C. V. Anand Bose, please. Thank you, Mr. Goyal, and also the distinguished panelists. See, the dawn of journalism, Joseph Pulitzer said, our republic and its press will rise or fall together. There is also the famous statement, facts are sacred, comments are free. I would like to judge the type of journalism that is going on around us in the light of these two precincts. What do we hear? What do we see around us during these pandemic days? I do not want to go into the generalities of this. Let me take two specific cases of false reporting, false narrative. One is led by Booker Prize winner Arunthati Roy. The other is a recent lead article and a cover story which appeared in Outlook magazine where they said, missing government of India. Let me come to my friend Arindadi Roy because she's from Kerala, where I also belong to. I'm reminded of a Broadway play, which was there a few decades back, a roaring success. It's, it was entitled, Who is Afraid of Virginia Woolf? In the Broadways of India, now the favorite question that we are asking, who is afraid of Arindadi Roy? Where is he and what is he writing? This house is on fire. Instead of trying to douse the fire with a bucket full of water, she is trying to pour kerosene, petrol, and incendiaries into it. This is the, the type of narratives which we are hearing from her. Whenever the India Baiters want to say something pointedly against the country, the favorite pastime with the New York Times or the Guardian or the Washington Post is to get a bite from the two so-called intellectuals of this nation, Mr. Adige and Arunthadi Roy. And what is it they have to say? They are saying the astounding revelation that 135 crores of people are under the threat of a pandemic. They forget that the entire world is grappling against it. She doesn't see from the intellectual metropolis of Washington or London. She refuses to see the fact of life, the largest cases. You see how the US has tackled it, how the European nations, they're all crashing down under the impact of COVID. She doesn't see that. She sees only the imperfections in this country. This is a subcontinent, it's not a country. 135 more crores of people are here the minute imperfections, the inevitable imperfections in such a situation is seen by a magnifying glass by Arundhati and her cohorts. And they're not trying to run down India. And what is the target of attack? The target of attack is the leader of the Indian nation, the commander in chief in this historic fight against pandemic, the prime minister of India, Mr. Narendra Modi. Mrs. Roy and her cohorts cannot accept a Chaiwala becoming the prime minister of a nation. These are the predictions of prejudices against India, which is being whipped up as a passion with the support of the foreign nations. There is a character called Cassandra in Homer's Iliad. 
Cassandra's predictions are not believed by anyone because she has a curse. I think Arunthati Roy's predictions and her predictions by her cohorts in journalism is not believed by people because they are their own curses. This is a nation which has internal strength. This is a nation which is fighting a war. This is a nation which is fighting a war successfully. Maybe a few battles will be lost, but we'll ultimately win the war. That is how all wars are won. And now, what is a fact of life? See, India still remains the second largest in the world for the number of vaccinations. Yes, next to the United States, we are the second largest in the world. The pace of vaccination is India is the first. Now, when this country was hit by COVID like anybody else, we did not have even sanitizers with us, no masks, no PPE kits. Now we are able to export it even to the other worlds. When the nation was, the whole world was thinking of something called a vaccine, India had already developed, already discovered, and we are manufacturing in millions, and nobody sees this. The false narratives which are coming in the press, the international press, particularly the New York Times, the Washington Post, the Guardian, I can take the press of China or the press of Pakistan or televisions like Al Jazeera in a different footing. But what is truth? Even at the sake of repetition, I would like to draw your attention to the famous Yoruba tale. In the Yoruba, in the Yor among the Yorubas, there is a folk tale. Truth and untruth are siblings. Once untruth asked truth, why don't we go for a swim, a friendly contest? Truth comes, takes off the clothes, jumps into the river and swims. What does untruth do? Untruth dons the clothes of truth and goes to the town. Everybody thought here is truth coming, truth coming, truth coming. They hail untruth in the garb of truth. Then truth comes after the swim and he finds his clothes are missing. All that is left there are the clothes of untruth. He said, never, never will I touch the clothes of untruth. So truth goes naked. That is the word expression, naked truth comes in. He was jeered at. He was humiliated. They thought untruth in the masquerading as truth is truth. This is a type of media here. Untruth masquerading as truth. And we, they expect us to believe in that. Who are behind this? See, the people of India are not fools. The ordinary people of India are not fools. Who gave Arundhati Roy and the cohorts the freedom of speech? It is not her inheritance. It is not her birthright. It is her right because the people of India have given it to her. Who runs this nation? Which is the government in this nation? The government in this nation are the people. It is we, the people of India, who frame the constitution. It is a constitution which guarantees the freedom of speech and the freedom to governance. If the guy who said government of India is missing. Where did he look for the government? He looked for the government in the, in the, in the secretariat. No. Government during a pandemic is in the field. Who is gone for, for the ordinary person? For the ordinary person, the nurse who treats him, the doctor who cures him, the health workers who attend on him, that is government. During a pandemic, government is a policeman who is there on the street maintaining not only law and order, but also pacifying people. Government is a soldier who flies to the other countries to bring oxygen when oxygen scarcity was there. Government is a worker who spends sleepless nights in the oxygen plant, manufacturing oxygen for the suffering people. Government is in the field. Government is not in the secretariat. Government is there, as Tagore said, where the tiller is tilling the soil. See government where it is. These misleading and misled journalists who are trying to find false stories and circulate false narratives should go to the field and see that India is there. India is with the common man. That's Arundhati Roy and her ilk feel that they have got any right to be intellectually superior to the common man. She and every journalist is only just one individual among 135 crores of citizens in this country. Nobody has given them the right to arrogate themselves to the pedestals of intellectual glory. And now we all are glad that Booker Prize is given to Adige, Booker Prize is given to Arundhati Roy. But that is not the only criteria for intellectual superiority. Look at Amartya Sen. 
Amartya Sen was a carping critic of the Prime Minister of India, Sri Narendra Modi. What did he say in the COVID days? He was complimenting India and its Prime Minister for the proactive steps we have taken. Ask Bill Gates. Bill Gates brought a letter of deep appreciation to India and its Prime Minister for the exemplary works which they have done. They are also intellectuals, Mrs. Roy, Mr. Adige, and also people like Ramachandra Guha, those who are attacking this nation from behind. Please listen to what Romain Roland has said. Romain Roland has said that this is a country which had a birthplace for every dream. Ever since the day people started dreaming, and you are, if you are working, living in the intellectual metropolises of London and the West and America, don't forget, Arnold Triumph said that the future of the world will be the future of India. Indian values should govern the world. And you go to the US, take Mark Twain. Mark Twain said that he's a cradle of civilization, grandmother of history. Eulogy is placed upon, he, he, upon this country. Sitting in this country, on the soil of this country, which has guaranteed freedom of speech. If you are using the freedom of speech against your own motherland, you are attacking your own mother. And one more question, armchair journalist. One more question. Where were you? You are in the habit of breaking news. You are in the habit of giving tomorrow news today. Which news did you give? Did you project how COVID surge will come in the second time? Did you ever say when it will come, how it will go? You are the predictors. You predict news, isn't it? Tomorrow's news today. Was there any, any specific suggestion from the carping critics of India? Therefore, you journalists who are turning out against your country in an hour of crisis, you are critical, supercritical, you are hypocritical. This nation is ripe enough to realize you. We will fight, we will win. As, as Martin Luther King said, we shall overcome. Yes, this is a statement of an ordinary retired citizen. This echoes the feelings of the 135 ordinary citizens of this country. We are together. We know the enemy is there. We are much stronger than enemy. We will defeat the enemy. But this kind of traitors who betray their country, Judas who betrayed Jesus Christ for 30 sovereigns. How many sovereigns do you get? You misguided journalists, tell us. Otherwise, we will find it out. Let us stop this fight against, against the pandemic. You will be exposed. India has the inner, inner strength. India will survive. Certainly, you will have to pay the price in democratic India. No doubt about it. Chanda, unjarehe hamara, satya me vajayade, vande madre. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Dr. An C. B. Anand Bose, for giving such a, uh, a strong rebuttal to what uh, uh, one of the author, um, I will not name her, has written about the uh, country. And space, why? Why? See, you cannot question at this time when there is a it's a very very common thing when there is a war and it's a, like a war everyone has to be together why they are not people forget at one time our late prime minister mr atal bihari Bajpayee praised uh, the late prime minister mrs indira gandhi because there was a fight there was a war going on and when at the time of the victory of bangladesh that type of ethos, that type of morality we were having. Today, when the condition is, when we are fighting with the, such a uh, 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 mass, mass pandemic or the major pandemic, which is faced by the entire world, how come we are questioning, we are asking, we are trying to hinder the work of the government? And like Dr. Bose has rightly said, he says, don't go and see to the, go to the secretary and don't see that the government is there. Go to the fields, go to the hostels, go to the streets. They all are, there is a government, not in sitting in the secretariat. So just to say missing the government of India is a wrong thing. You just want to uh, make a, a sensualization thing so that you will come in limelight. This is very, very wrong thing for anyone, whosoever, he's a writer or she's a writer, they must understand whenever there is a pro uh, committee, when there, whenever there is a problem to the country, everyone has to be one. Where you might be having different religion, caste, creed, political alliance, but when there is a, it's we are all facing. Everyone is facing. All families are facing this. COVID is not seeing which religion you are, which age you are, which political alliance you are. When we all are one, why why we are fighting? Thank you very much, uh, 
for giving such a strong views, uh, Dr. Sivian and Bose. Definitely, uh, I'm sure our viewers now got the thing, Keep instead of, and similarly, I will just add one more thing. What we are seeing on the social media, any news whatsoever coming, we are just passing it off. Please verify the news. Please check the news. Without checking the news, we are sending those news, which is very, very disturbing. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sivian and Bose, for giving your uh, opening remarks. Now, I would like to go to my next guest, and he is Shri Madha Bhushi Madan Gopal IES. Uh, Mr. Gopal is the former additional chief secretary of government of Karnataka. He has a master's degree in commerce and postgraduate diploma in journalism. He was selected in the Indian Administrative Services IES in 1984 and placed in Karnataka cadre. During his more than three decades of service in Karnataka, he has served the state and government of India in many departments, including health and family welfare, higher education, food and civil supplies, forest, environment and ecology, water resources, mines and geology. He also served as executive director for World Bank funded Jala Samavardhane Yojana, Integrated Tank Development Project, Commissioner of, for Public Instructions, Bangalore, Registrar, Central University of Hyderabad. He has attended various workshops and seminars at national and international level as a resource person on community mobilization, non-formal education, health, rural development, empowerment, and other related issues. He is also a visiting professor for International Institute on Chronic Hypoxia La Paz, Bolivia. He is life member of IIPA, New Delhi, ASCI, Hyderabad, Bangalore International Center, and Sri Ramana Maheshi Center for Learning, Bangalore. He has published many books and presented papers at national and international forums. He has visited several or more than 60 countries to attend seminars and workshops and also as part of the study teams on various development and educational issues. His hobbies include mountain, traveling, reading, and photography. Welcome, uh, Mr. Gopal, on our show. Mr. Thank Gopal, you. you have heard what Dr. C. V. Anand Bose has spoken. He has mentioned everything you have heard. I need not to repeat. Now, definitely, we would like to know from you your views on the false narratives on India. Shri Madan Gopal, please. Thank you. I would like to say, uh, begin the, my introduction, that false narrative, don't put it in a time frame of one year, five years, six years. I'll take you a little bit backwards. I want to give a larger picture of a false narrative. Because we used to play a game in our childhood. It is called a telephone. A 10 to 15 children we sit in a circle. One person has to utter a, a three or a four word uh, a sentence into a person sitting next to him, his ear. He has to pass on to next, pass on to next, pass on to next, pass on to next. By the time he comes to the person who uttered the original sentence, total change. There is not a word, not a letter matches. This is what I call a false narrative. What exactly happening is that now, I'll give it a historical perspective. It's not that it happened today, tomorrow. If you see the historical perspective of over decades, unfortunately, post-independent India didn't try to correct it for their own political, political whatever ideological, whatever the limitations they imposed on themselves. I'll cut to the why exactly the false narrative is a creating a story within a story within a story. And where is a falsehood? Where is the truth? It becomes a blur. This is a whole idea of a falsehood. Of false narratives. When you come to the what happened exactly of centuries, whether it is a social, whether it is a cultural, whether it is economic, whether it is educational, whether it is governmental, whether it is administrative, every arena, this false narrative has entered in the Indian psyche. This Indian psyche, I just give an example, social. We are always made to believe that Indian society is divided, we are backward, we are inferior, and all misinterpretation. Come to the cultural, we are all, all the negative. We don't have a culture at all. We don't have religion at all. We don't have values at all. We don't have anything. This type of a, and, and then there, there, there is a, it's a vacuum. There's only the, some Islam brought some architecture, British bordered uh, education. This is, this is a narrative, false narrative built on us. Educational field. We have forgotten how Professor Dharampal come out with his beautiful tree, the book, how he narrated what the educational system 
prior to British coming into India, prior to 1957. It is a phenomenal work. Everyone has to read what exactly the education system in India. Similarly, economic structure. If you read the R.C. Datta's Economic History of India, and also the many, many research papers published by Indian Law Institute Delhi, will come across the very deep, very scientific, very well-preserved systems in India, whether it is Panchagra system or a self-sustained economy, administrative and, and governmental. We have our own Karnataka famous place called Anubhava Mantapa, where the prime minister has mentioned is by in Basokalan area, where the people of different faith, different ideas, different thinking, they brought together and have to debate. This is the culture of India. So over a period of centuries, we are made to believe this is this is a fundamental thing which we have to recognize and realize. Now, over a period of time, maybe it is process is there. I'm saying that always the process of uh, putting a right narrative, correct narrative is on. But now it has become a the entire Indian mind as trying to see the what exactly the consequence of a false narrative. The false narrative is now that false narrative being questioned now. When the false narrative is challenged now. And we say that once again, when, when the myth was created that India was always dependent on agriculture economy. It's not true. A, a, a study done in 1835, which is a, which is a published the journals, it says that only 30% of Indian population are dependent on agriculture. We had an international trade. We had a very built robust industry. We had a very, very robust exchange system. All these things, because aim that we are made to believe that India is always a loser. We are always inferior. This is the psyche which was built into India and for, for their own uh, uh, economic, uh, what their are, political reasons. Now, over a period of time, people slowly, particularly youth and the youngsters, they are beginning to realize that this false narrative, why India, now we are discovering where is the field of astronomy. You take a field, a, any field, astronomy, mathematics, literature, sculpture, any field of arena. I'm not saying that India, is every, every great thing has happened in India. But what is great in India is not recognized by anywhere. This is what we have to make a fundamental difference now. Over a period of time, the false narrative, this is now COVID, whether it is COVID situation, the economic situation, this is this is deliberate. It is, it is a, when, when the established order of a false narrative is challenged by a correct narratives, the entire system, entire eco ecosystem of the false narratives so-called uh, uh, left liberal intellectuals, so-called, you know, they, they claim themselves as self-styled historians. They claim those who depend on the borrowed and uh, uh, bankrupt imported ideologies, they are shaken now. Their power structures are shaken. They become jobless, they become unemployed. Now those who are, those who are depending on the, the narrating or continuing perpetuating the false narrative, they stand exposed. Precisely now, because of that, the false narrative, those are making a false narrative, making nice. Whether it is Arundhati Rai, whether it is Ramsanar Guha, we can have intellectual debate because it's, it's not, not that making a point for any political angle. I'm talking from a civilizational point of view. From a civilizational point of view, what is India? It should, we have to see in the, go to a small village in, a, in, in Punjab, go to the swam village in Rajasthan, go to a small remote uh, village in uh, Himachal, go to a remote, remote village in Kerala, remote village in Andhra Pradesh, remote village in Karnataka, in the length and breadth of the country, certain belief systems, that is India, that is Bharat. If you realize that now the, those who are in the perpetual, I don't want to put it in a present context as COVID, I can talk a lot uh, because I was health secretary for four years. I know what exactly happened in no country in the world could have faced this type of situation. Now in the lowest cumulative fatality rate in the world, largest you know, vaccination with all the limitations. I'm not saying everything has gone well. As certain things, some mistakes have taken place because something unprecedented, uncertain pandemic comes, the mistakes will take place. So, but that thing we have to keep it in mind. There are some people who want to see only dark. They don't want to see a, a bright, sparkling sunlight, dazzling sunlight. No, if you close your eyes and say that everything is dark, you can't blame the sunlight. What just to conclude, I say that medium in the once upon a time, many years ago, decades ago, by Robert McLuhan said that medium is the message. Now it has become a new word that medium is ideology. Medium is ideology because the ideological slant of the presenters, anchors, the TV channels, newspapers is becoming more and more clear to the people of India. People of India are no longer fools. 
we are capable of understanding we, we understood now when we understood the entire depth and the context of a false narrative from historical and philosophical point of view nothing stops india this is where the where the i can say the confidence is building up now every false yes false narratives will continue but thing is that the, in the in the old and the 10 years ago nobody questioned this false narrative now even even every village every town every small university college people are asking questioning the false narratives this is where i think it is a victory for uh, uh, reversing the false narratives going on the right track i am sure india is will capable of uh, countering and defeating these forces who want to see india always backward who want to see always in the sub subservient position now india has risen now whether internationally whether nationally yes i am not defying i am not saying that everything is fine there are some definitely a country of 138 crore population some complex issues there some problems will be there but we in india united together we will face the challenge successfully i am sure the days of false narratives are over they are they are already burying themselves they are they, they are already dug up their own graves now we need not we can we have to only thing we have to be almost alert and conscious of what's happening around and be prepared to counter false narrative at every level whether it is a media whether it is a governmental whether it is a policy making whether it is economic field every field false narratives are to be challenged questioned and defeated thank you very much uh, mr madan gopal for giving your views and uh, again in a very very forthright view way and what um, i will just highlight one or two things one one thing is mr gopal mentioned that uh, being he was the health secretary for four years he has, he has, he knows the health system how it works he says such type of pandemic no other government can face how the government of india has faced but there might be some lacunas which is usually happen which our earlier panelist dr bose has also mentioned that when you are fighting a war there might be some fronts you are going to lose but ultimately the war is going to be win here also few places lacunas because it was something unprecedented nobody was knowing nobody was having a previous experience of such type of pandemic not in india or everywhere in the world and we have seen in, in other countries that are more fatality and uh, more devastating but still what uh, mr madan gopal says he says now the country has woken up they are rebutting they have understood the false narratives they understood which anchor or which media channel is giving such types of views so they are coming up and the day is not far when the everybody will know uh, who is giving the false narratives so one need not to be worried about it but country is one and we have to see to it that we should be united for all the fronts we should not do something which destroy our country thank you very much uh, mr madan gopal for giving thank your you. views uh, now i would like to invite my next guest and he is mr pkd nambiar mr nambiar is a marketing strategist and political analyst he is the managing director and ceo of flex communications he is the chairman b square group armed with over 20 years of experience as an entrepreneur marketing strategist and a political analyst mr pkd nambiar is a name to reckon with in the industry he is also renowned as a startup turnaround and growth specialist in the corporate sector furthermore he is a sharp communication strategist for the sme sector he has addressed various prominent political debates forums colleges and corporate across the country he shares his value Bill opinions on political, social, and business issues, and has appeared on numerous news channels, including NDTV 24 by 7, CNN, News 18, News X, Times Now, CNBC, India News, India Ahead, etc. Some of his well-known programs include New Age Leadership, The Brand You, You Too Can Be an Entrepreneur. His expertise lies in strategic planning and brand building. He excels the whole gamut of marketing and 360 degree advertising functional parameters. With the vision to deliver excellence in every chosen undertaking, Mr. Nambiar is hands on in all aspects of advertising, planning, management of ATL, BTL, and online advertising. Being the professional marketing strategist, he works with the marketing team members to assure the accurately execution of high quality marketing strategies within the defined time frame. he is a powerful political strategist committed to delivering sincere political conversation in the major news channel debates and discussions as well as taking a defined lead in making indian youth aware of relevant political affairs 
being a motivational speaker he believes that indian youth has got the immense potential to transform the downfall scenario of our country into a noticeable one by making great endures that will play a crucial role in the growth of the nation in every aspect when india calls itself a young nation youth in india should not be left unexplored his consistent effort in bringing the fruitful voices of youth is implementing a change as well as helping to fill this void contributing meaningfully in the future of our nation welcome mr pkd nambiar on our show i would just like to add one thing about mr nambiar yesterday i was watching uh, one channel and he was there and one of the panelists uh, from uh, the opposition party uh, from the kerala from the ruling party of the kerala i must say was bashing uh, the interfering or saying what's over the words but he used a word for the one of the lady spokesperson of congress that she is a uh, frustrated uh, spokesperson but which was a very very personal comment and mr nambiar being not affiliated to congress took an objection on this and he he said you used very harsh words even to that uh, uh, person from the uh, ruling party of kerala he said whatsoever discussion you do it should be a very civilized one you cannot degrade or do anybody and especially for ladies whether you are on a, in the tv channel or anywhere so that type of quality a person if he is having and if we have such type of persons on our tv shows and nationally then this type of false narration because persons use these types of words when they want to cement their false narrations and they want to present it as a truth gospel truth they feel that this is the truth and that's why they use such type of you words to humiliate others uh, so i must welcome our PK, mr pk dinambia and mr pk dinambia you have heard our earlier panelist dr cv anand bose as well as mr madan gopal both have mentioned with very clearly very strongly that india is india is facing pandemic no doubt about it but the way india is facing and the way media is projecting about us is very very different and this time even few of our own country persons are writing giving uh, such type of false narratives in the international as well as national press which is not acceptable at all now we would like to know your views on false narratives on india mr pkd nambiar please please uh, please unmute please unmute mr nambiar Thank you uh, so much, Mr. Goyal, for having me again on your show, and it is indeed a privilege to be with uh, Dr. Bose again, and of course, the one whom I, I really admire for his uh, he's a great orator, and of course, forget about all the other skills he really charge up everybody whenever I, I I've, I've been fortunate to hear him many times, uh, and uh, good to connect with you, sir, uh, Mr. Madan. Uh, so this topic, what you have chosen today. is such a timely one mr goyal and i must congratulate you for taking this up uh, maybe i am a person who is in the thick and thin of this media bash which we take place every day in the evenings and i see that there is a conspiracy i would not call it like it is nothing to do with the covid it is nothing to do with uh, one or two or three actions it is a continuous effort to tarnish the image of the country it is it has got a complete strategical move one after another and it is nothing to do with only the media it is to do it is a comprehensive 360 degree strategy to tarnish the very image of india and through to tarnish the right wing politics in this country so this has nothing to do with only india it is a global strategy so if you really look at the narration one by one remember that in the 2015 uh, i believe the award wapasi gang so it is not about just the media person or the journalist it is a section of so called literate or the intellectual jisko hum buddhi jeevi kehte hain dam they all wanted one fine day there is no democracy this country is failing and this country is over and this country is becoming a hindu rashtra this country will not have any minorities will never be able to live in this country every he, uh, muslim will have to go to pakistan so on so forth and did it 
there is an another part of it. if a person would die because of hunger in kerala that will not become a news if a person who died because of a hunger in telangana that is not a news but if a cow dies in up in a remote village it is one of the largest news there are if it is a 23 crore people populated one of the largest state in this country up if there is one rape take place every every crime is a crime but that will be a, not only a national news an international news all the people all the right uh, so called liberal media will be there to cover it up for weeks and weeks and weeks to say that there is a major law and order problem whereas if there is a covid patient in the ambulance is raped and killed in one of the most progressive state in this country it is not even a 30 second news in this country so the narration is to tarnish the very image of this country is happening not from today from so long but it has taken a different momentum altogether in the last, ever since mr modi came into power so earlier they wanted to have an image for up or even a gujarat wherein everything was wrong that was the way it was projected even to the so current prime minister was even denied a visa to go to the united states so it is all a part of a larger conspiracy which includes the so called celebrities from the bollywood the so called uh, the the buddhi jeevis the so, so called award wapasi gang and some of this khan market gang which we call in delhi that so called intellectuals and uh, the, the, the 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 political pimps or uh, the brokers comes together to tarnish the very image now look at the way it is being done Now, for an example i was just participating on a show i don't want to uh, two days continuously one of the top most journalists in this country she was all around going in the up the ganges were in hundreds of dead bodies were floating this is the whole story so if you really look at just imagine there were 15 bodies she could identify on the first day i asked her in 2015 when akhilesh yadav was the chief minister more than 150 or the dead bodies were floating in ganga and there is a history to it i also told that there is a reason there is a economic reason there is a governance issue there is also a religious reason why in ganga ji ke andar pehli baar nahi hua hai ki that dead bodies ho rahe the large number of hindu society till today even believe that jal pravah is one of the way of cremation wherein if a person dies they might and you are from mathura mr goyal you would be knowing it there is a large number of people put their bodies as a jal pravah but what is the narration there are thousands of bodies are un, uh, cremate uh, not even getting people do not even have the money to cremate and they are just throwing and covid is everywhere the government of india is saying if it is 2 and a half lakh people have died the, there is a narration of uh, in the media saying that more than 1 million people have died what is that what we wanted to project everything happens in this country is wrong this country is still the uh, as shashi tharoor once famously stated it is like a snake charmer's world this country produces the one of the finest technology this country is the world's largest democracy this country is the fifth largest economy in the world this country is one of the exporter of uh, the largest exporter of vaccine this country do give the pharma capital of the world but as mr madan ji said that we wanted to project that we are an agrarian economy we are a poor country we do not have anything for our daily uh, 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 feed india did not ask even in the during the covid time from any aid from anybody it is as a um, uh, as a practice many countries have come and sent their um, uh, help to india created it as a what the the, the so called liberal media created it is india is asking for aid to manage the crisis covid crisis because we are not able to manage the challenge today is 
there is uh, let me accept this that while these kind of people are going whether it is one two three or five or ten hundred people are going they are still able to set the left liberal media is still in this country is setting the agenda of discussion despite mr modi uh, one of the most powerful communicator one of the toughest leader india ever had been a, not been able to counter that narration mr boss a person like you you are also very very intellectual this is where the concentration now should be i was told one of my very senior journalist very very senior journalist he said when we have been taken to kashmir to cover something like that when we go till the time we get down at the kashmir airport shrinagar airport all the media people would be saying yes india government is doing very good all the stone pelting everything is wrong uh, i mean i think they should come into the these things pakistan should not interfere etc he says but the moment they get out of the airport with their mic and the camera they will completely change their color and wanted to criticize this country when the uh, some people wanted to go and write an article in the washington post or new york times just to criticize this country along with that just see the narration the, how the false narration to take place to tarnish the image of india the lancet as you said is saying it's a medical journal let me accept the fact that it is a, a well known medical journal what is the role of a medical journal to criticize a government a medical journal's job is to give the facts about the health pharma medical that's it that's beyond that a health journal have nothing to do to give a political comment but they went on and did. look at the another part of it on the one side in the bengal there was so much have was happening the ruling government sponsored killing was happening no national journalist have gone to cover in the ground tell me one national journalist who had gone to cover in the ground when there is a kargil war was happening all the journalists were there why the journalists were not going to um, uh, there were hundreds of people were killing more than a lakh of people were been just had to leave the state why nobody was going and covering even a union minister was attacked nobody wanted to talk about it. so this is called as it is not just called as the false narrative mr goyal it is actually a conspiracy against the very ideal of this country it is an attack on the fundamentals of our country it is to tarnish the very image of our country it is to kill our democracy and to make us a colony again of somebody or the other it is jaisa kehta na jaisa kehta hai ki अपनी माँ को बेचने वाली बात है जो कुछ चंद पैसा के लिए वो वाली हालत आई मीन द कॉन्स्पिरसी ऑफ वन आफ्टर अनदर टू टारिश द इमेज ऑफ दिस कंट्री नीड्स टू स्टॉप फॉर दैट देर हैज टू बी एन अनदर वेव ऑफ कम्युनिकेशन सेटिंग द एजेंडा नीड्स टू कम इन दिस कंट्री वी शुड बी एबल टू रियली गिव अ रियालिटी चेक ऑफ दिस पीपल वाई वुड दे रियली why are they doing it what are they going to get it the isolated voice like mine or maybe mr boss may not be sufficient the what we need in this nation today is to tell the truth to the world set the agenda of discussion bring the positivity not only for uh, uh, instill the positivity in amongst every indian and to say that we are a positive country and we are a world leader and these false narrations these conspiracy will not function any more at any time i think that is what we are really required to but if you really look at it from the action it is not about a one arundhati roy or a barkhadat or a radhip sir they said there is a large section of people who cannot even hear the word i mean i wanted to tell you one thing mr boss that few days ago i was having a uh, uh, in a uh, debate with n ram of uh, the hindu on the national television at 9 pm he is saying i have i hate hindutva i have a major issue 
with the word of hindutva and hindu ideology look at the power a person who owns a newspaper jis jiska naam hindu hai the hindu hai and that guy is blatantly or saying that i hate hindutva i am against the hindutva i am against the right wing politics i asked him why don't you take out the name the hindu from your newspaper you are not even eligible to pronounce that name hindu number 2 in the same word in the passionately you are talking against the hindu hinduism and hindutva why don't you also say there is something called as a minority appeasement politics which is taking place in this country why are you not even talking about it? if a hindu dies in delhi it is not a news but if it is a muslim boy then it becomes a national news for couple of days or maybe even months so there is a conspiracy to create it is not only just an attack on india as it is it is also an attack on hinduism hindu just to ensure that if not today on a larger conspiracy this country should not become the hindu should be over from this planet that is the actual conspiracy and eventually to the route to take that is to minority appeasement the route to take that is to damage the the current leadership the route to take that is to give negativity about this country and to be uh, to, to, to tarnish the very image of this country i think we need to be very aware and i'm very happy that we all share almost the same views and i i i i i would like to say that mr boss should take up this because he is intellectually high he is very well connected and he is an amazing orator i think a people like you should be able to set the agenda rather than today all the right wing people have to follow an agenda we are not been able to set the agenda of discussion till the time we are not able to set the agenda of the discussion this will continue to happen these people will always be there thank you so much once again for having me on your show thank you very much mr nambia for giving your views again his strong views and mr nambia explained how the small things they are narrating in a very very bigger way which is a false narrative and he has given even the example of uh, bodies which are flowing in ganges and he says in 2015 when akhilesh uh, yadav was the chief minister how come at that time 150 bodies were flowing and nobody has reported the way it is reported now and he has given that that because in the hindu customs and yes it's a called one is something is called also the jal samadhi so there are many things and many times it happens when the uh, the burial is taking place then when the uh, when the cremation is taking place uh, the half uh, burned body they just float in the yamuna or ganga so that is a very common practice uh, everywhere but what he says is it is not only the uh, attack only for the india but he is according to him it is attack on hindus and hinduism and he has given the example how mr n ram the chief uh, managing uh, editor of uh, de hindu has said that i hate hindu or hindutva it's not the question whether your personal belief whether you are hindu or muslim or sikh or isai but when you are in a country you all are one and we have to respect each others uh, religion we should not uh, just say that you are being a hindu we will do like this and one should understand the majority is hindu here can we say the same thing in any other country for their religion which is a majority there we can't so thank you very much uh, mr nambia definitely i will come back to you with a question to you now i would like to go to dr boss dr boss journalists irrespective of india or foreigners they all are spreading false narration not all many of them i must say and you know one thing that uh, negativity is always goes very fast than the positivity uh, because uh, that is a, a human tendency uh, rather i will just add one thing yesterday the uh, former director general of doordarshan was on my show and he says what is happening today on the media they are showing the uh, burials they are showing the cremation what impact they are leaving on the children or, or the society they they are not understanding today so he being a former director general of doordarshan he himself is repenting he says the what is the journalist standard today 
why they are showing and, and, and that is fact that today if you open the tv any time whether it's morning day uh, noon or afternoon or evening you will just see the fire is burning and the bodies are burning that's why i in my report i asked whether we have seen such type of things happening in usa or any other country my question dr bose is whether it was only the uh, uh, by the cia by if whether it is by the cia or any other agencies or any other foreign government who wants to destabilize our country and by, by our present government and that's why this much narrative is coming against india and it is not and i will again remind you it is not for the second wave it was from the first wave that they are saying all these things what is your opinion about this uh, dr bose yeah mr goel i would like to <clears throat> build up on what uh, mr nambiar has uh, stated quoting the experience which he had from uh, mr ram of the hindu that precisely is the issue the prejudicial stance taken by some of the media men in india and abroad i am reminded of a old nursery rhyme which is i don't like you dr fell the reason why i cannot tell this alone i know full well i don't like you dr fell <laughs> i think that sums up the attitude of the media which was disseminated by ram through his arrogant words now what is truth when we say false narrative it means there is a proper narrative somewhere else and mr nambiar also stressed the need for a reality check yes when we do a reality check in reporting so there is this young man who went and approached socrates he said how is athens you know socrates does not answer straight his method is catechism he asked a counter question he asked a young man where are you from i am from crete how is crete beautiful place you can trust everybody there is lot of warmth and love the place is very secure it that is god's own country and socrates said athens is also like that another young man comes and asks sir how is athens socrates asks where are you from i am from crete how is crete nasty brute selfish no security for your life and property it's a boorish place it's hell upon earth socrates said athens is also like that see athens does not change only perception changes facts do not change but only narration changes so those who want to see the truth they give a truthful narrative those who want to see untruth they show a narrative which is opposed to that as somebody mentioned here you know there is a saying which somehow means by the time truth puts on the shoes untruth would have traveled in the world three times yes the negative the untrue that travels faster than truth that is what we are seeing here and i mean when we come to the as madan gopal said let's not confine to the covid false narratives alone he narrated a history of uh, false reporting false narratives now it dates back even to that it dates back even to that when people were spreading false narratives about india in the prior to the independence and even after that you know bbc see bbc has claims that they have got credibility they have lost credibility when it comes to reporting on india that will come to later bbc once gave a news spaghetti is grown on trees they showed many spaghetti trees you know full of spaghetti and they said why how how it is cultivated why is it it is kept a secret because they didn't want others to know that is why the spaghetti trees were not grown now bbc has an arrangement with the spaghetti estate and they also said there are 2500 spaghetti saplings available first come first served they got around 2.5 million requests for the spaghetti tree the next day they came and explained why that convincing false narrative they said 
did you forget yesterday was april 1st then <laughs> it is always said about the media how they report the pope landed in paris so many questions were put to him one mischievous journalist asked him holy father what do you say about night nightclubs of paris and the holy father asked are there nightclubs in paris the next day the banner headline was the first question the pope asked while landing in france was are there nightclubs in paris <laughs> that is the false narrative which we have been used to now there is something called the jupiter effect the jupiter effect you know the jupiter effect is something which happens when two of the orbit the pla planets come together on the straight line i think it is jupiter and venus also then technically you will levitate you lose your you know the the, the, the center of gravity changes you can fly in the air you can levitate and it is in their scientific program they said tomorrow at 10 between 10 30 and 32 this jupiter effect will happen please be careful you will levitate hundreds of people levitated and one guy even sued bbc for saying that since you did not inform me it's, it's sufficiently about the after effect of this my head hits the ceiling you have to give you compensation then the scientist said, I was only pulling a fast one. There is something called Jupiter effect, but it has not taken place. So the media can always, and you know, during the days of uh, Ferdinand Marcus, his cousin, you know, he said, stone, men of the Stone Age have been identified in the forest there. So many people came there. He made a lot of money. And when somebody in, when, when to interview the so-called Stone Age men, they were wearing jeans and top. And he said, I claim that you are wearing leaves. That is how you are shown on the TV. He said, this particular gentleman, that is a cousin of Ferdinand, he had given us money and made us tell the media that we are still belong to the Stone Age. So this media hype and false narratives are there. Once it is innocent, you know, we can understand. But when it is calculated to break a country, now the media, the false narratives which come in the media, we all know. That is the work of the Break India Brigade. And you asked a very pertinent question. You said, well, CIA or any other, any other nation or any other agency is involved in this Break India game with the support of certain journalists. There is an instance which I can narrate from my own home state, that is Kerala. In 1957, the first Marxist ministry head, headed by EMS Nabudri Part came into power. The first Marxist ministry which came through parliamentary election anywhere in the world. There was a liberation struggle against them. When it mounted like that, that government was dismissed by Jawaharlal Nehru. Now, after years, Daniel Patrick Moynihan, who later came to India as a US ambassador, he has written in his book, The Dangerous Place, that money was given to political parties and media men in Kerala by the CIA. And this has been acknowledged by the then US ambassador to India. Everybody knew it at that time, except the common man. The media, the politicians, the religious organizations, communal organizations, they all took money from the foreign hand. Therefore, your question, when we have so many foreign agencies which are against India, they are plotting against India from various countries. Some of these are headed by professional agencies of the nations, like CIA. We can't say for certain whether there is anybody involved in it. But if we analyze what has happened in this nation and make a projection to the future, I am sure that this break India brigade, including the journalists, the armchair journalists, they are the Naxalites, the ultra reds, they are all in the pay packet of some foreign agency. This is an intelligent conjecture. This is something which we have to investigate. Now, <coughs> I'll cut short. How did the media do this? As Madan said, as Ms. Nabia said, this is, this is not started yesterday or today. You know, in the 60s, you may remember, India was pictured as a poor country, country of buggers by BBC particularly. Country of buggers, snake charmers, and, and, and you know, people who are superstitious. Then when India became, started becoming an economic superpower, that narrative will not sell. Then they said, India has casteism and communalism. 
Now, now they are saying pointedly, Muslims are we hunted, hunted out of this country in the Citizenship Amendment Act, in the scrapping of Article 370, in the, in the present agrarian, so-called agrarian revolt. We see the hands of this Break India Brigade working from abroad. You all know the trouble which happened on Republic Day when somebody dra drove the tractor. During the first five crores of rupees was given to the Babar Khalsa unit in Germany and the, and the riot in, in Delhi. Now report is out, report of an independent agency is out. 120 crores changed hands, parked in 73 accounts. And who are the political parties who took the money? Who are the advocates who took the money in the name of politics? All this is now well known, but no national media reports this. Now, <clears throat> what do we do? <clears throat> that is the question. It is not that, you know, there is a way out. Where there is a will, there is a way. If this nation decides, if the nation wants, we can take action against this. Yes, freedom of the press is sacrosanct, they say, but not, not during pandemic, not when the na nation is burning. There should be restrictions on that. If they can impose restrictions of themselves, good. Otherwise, government has to step in, you know, to take, if I can put across serious issues in a lighter way. We had a minister in Kerala, very strong man, very tough man. You know, he forgot to get married because of his deep engagements, you know. This program, for this program, he didn't find time. Finally, when he was past 50, his party man colleagues encouraged him to marry a 22-year-old girl. This guy will come every day and his typical, you know, style, he will order around. Is bed coffee ready? So she will give him bed coffee. Is warm water ready? She will switch on the geyser, mix the water and keep it ready. Is the car ready? She will call the driver and the car will come to the portico. Once her mother came. Is this the way he talks to you? Oh, he's a great man. He's a big minister. No, no, that's all in his office. In the house, this should not be. What do I do? When he asks you, is bed coffee ready? You should tell him. Bed coffee is not ready. So bloody what? <laughs> he said, how can he say that? You have to. The mother said, you have to. Next day, he comes and says, is bed coffee ready? This woman again gives him bed coffee. The mother encourages her. Then he comes and asks, is warm water ready? This young wife comes and says boldly, warm water is not ready, so bloody what? Meekly, this lion of a man said, ah, if warm water is not ready, I'll take bath in cold water. I think that is the, I, the behavior of the press also. Then the press is under pressure. We are pressing them to tell the truth, not untruth. The reality check, which, was, which Nambiar has said, I think unless the press is forced to do the reality check, it happened. It happened with the heroic press of Kerala. See, one channel which is very popular in Kerala, they reported wrongly in their channel, in the UAE, that people are dying on the road. So this false narrative, they were arrested. After that, that channel does not say that in that country. But the same channel, there was a recent posting which has, post which has become viral. Somebody asked the same channel, why didn't you report on the atrocities in Bengal? You know the reply given? That reply is viral now. The anchor or the, or the news reader said, if four sankis are killed, why should we bother about it? Now, this is the way we should know how to call stops. We should know how to control, how to control the press. I am not saying, now you know it's unfashionable to say controlling the press. The press has to be made responsible. What we want is a responsible press. If the responsible media refuses to be responsible, it is for the common man. It is for the, the, the society to step in and reduce the word government. We cannot allow enemies from within when the nation is waging a war. And these false narratives are very strong weapons which are shot against the independence and dignity of this country. Therefore, I would say, where there is a way, will there is a way. If the nation strongly tells the motivated press, there is no warm water, so bloody what? The press will meekly say, 
if there is no warm water, we'll take in cold water. I think that is the message. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Bose. Uh, now I would like to go to uh, Mr. Madan Gopal. Mr. Madan Gopal, what uh, are your views about mounting a tech? Uh, sorry? Yeah, just a, only one minute answer. I don't want you because I know that you have to catch a flight. No problem. What are your What are your views about mounting a tech against India by the press? And what are the available views in front of India? What are the uh, available avenues for to in confront uh, in uh, this uh, type of uh, attacks which is coming? Is Is there any way that India can uh, confront? I, yes. I, what I could see that I put it in my presentation of the larger picture, that we have to recognize that larger picture, number one. Once you recognize the larger picture, the processes will unravel themselves. The processes will become a, a reality. So here, when you are questioning that, some few voices here and there, I will talk about the COVID, because as a whatever limited experience I have, no pandemic in the world had disappeared in a one year time. Any, you see the study, the history of pandemics and epidemiological evidence, wherever it is, no pandemic disappeared in one year. Why people are making so much noise? We have to prepare this. Ultimately, we should responsible behavior. There's safe, I don't use the word social distancing. I have safe distancing and the proper vaccination policy. These things will unravel. Slowly that they will unroll. But the thing is that if the 10, 100 voices, think one, one fortunate thing which you have to see that, these false narratives were the prevailing culture in India. Now the prevailing culture is being reversed. Real culture is coming out now. Obviously, those who are, uh, uh, they, they lost their livelihoods by spreading the falsehoods, whether it is a, is a positions in the any committees in government of India or educational institutions or the, or the whatever the post the retirement benefits which some of these, uh, my own colleagues enjoy, now they are stopped. Because of that, you know, if there are 10 voices, we should reply with a hundred voices. Exactly that is, uh, if you could see that, some on the farm loss, with a, with such a such a life, such a falsehoods are spread on the farm loss. Same political party which preached that, what is the, what is the limitations of existing farm loss, they take an opposite view. This has to be exposed. I'm sure that there are 10 voices which are trying to, still trying to, I'm saying that, these false, whatever the narratives, those are perpetuators of the narratives are on deathbed. I can say this is there, you know, when the when the when we call it as a Sandeep Pralap in, in, in Sanskrit. Sandeep Pralap means those who are in the delirium about to die, he talks something rubbish. I am saying this is the false narratives are in the Sandeep Pralapam. They are on the deathbed now, they are about to be buried, they are about to go for their funerals. Therefore, they are now uttering all types of rubbish. The 10 such voices are now countered by 100 voices. This process will continue. It's not the something which ends today. The false narratives, those who are dethroned from their positions of power, will continue to say what they want to say surreptitiously. Use this international mechanisms. Use some press channel. Meet some NGO. Meet so-called uh, you know, uh, social interest groups. This has to be now the change. They change the colors, the chameleons. The changing colors have to be okay. recognized by us, counter that strongly. I am sure we are capable of countering that. Okay, thank you very much. Now my question goes to Mr. Nambiar. Only one minute, please. One answer rather. Any suggestion you want to give to the government to see to it that they should counter this thing which is taking place, this uh, um, false narrative on India. Any suggestion which I you want to give? I believe that the governments have no role in it, or uh, even if there is, if it is, it has to be minimal. I believe that the civil society and within the, whether it is in the media, bureaucracy, or in the opposition, a large number of people who believes in this country, in this nation, and the value system of this country needs to come together and to understand these people are not a journalist or opposition parties or for that matter, any other group, but they are anti-national elements who have worked, who are working on an agenda to defame this country. I'll just give you, I know that you have 30 seconds more for me. I'll tell you what, look at the incidents one by one. The anti-CAA protest, one year, it's over. Farmer, farm bill protest, 
even if the people wanted to go for a protest against the article 370 that that has been done there are you have never even heard of there are some kind of of course uh, one of the senior most uh, officer from the karnataka is here in the karnataka there is any kind of a labor problem even in an apple factory was having labor issues suddenly erupting and all these things have got one color in common just look at very uh, in a micro level the oh. color of all these flag oh. is red that is very very alarming for this country all the intellectuals all the people who love this country need to wake up shout scream and say that i love this country more than anything and all those who are working against the interest of this country needs to be no. actually exposed completely okay okay there's sorry out of time now thank you very much but what our viewers i would just like to say one thing only whenever there is a false narratives please be cautious you know what are the facts today you know you can very well search on google you can very well see what is happening don't go on the false narratives if you will start closing your ears or what not watching those types of false narratives definitely those who are creating the false narratives will get a good slap on their face thank you very much uh, uh, for all of you and because today's and today's program which has been uh, live telecasted by uh, v4 news global tv v4 stream news gaon se samvad sarokar news it was also shown on facebook and youtube live uh, and our end well is to bring to you every day new topic but now for last one uh, four five days we have started a, a, a evening program in hindi that is called kal aaj aur kal lal goel ke sang and today's our chief guest is shri k abhay chandra jain former minister government of karnataka uh, please tune in tomorrow today at 4:30 pm uh, for kal aaj aur kal lal goel ke sang thank you very much uh, uh, dr cv anand bose thank you very much uh, mr madan gopal thank you very much uh, mr pk dinambiar and thank you all the viewers for watching our show thank you very much